I enjoyed your lecture. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I enjoyed your lecture very much, the history and the logic of it. Uh, from most of what I heard, I believe you mentioned in this country as well as in Western Europe and in Asia, South Asia, that a Muslim subset or minority had preserved their rights within a secular form of government and legislation. I want to ask a slightly different take on it. I've heard, as have probably many of you, that in the United States, among the so-called founding fathers, Jefferson in particular, that he was more of a deist than a Trinitarian, more of a believer in one true God. And some of you might have even heard that he had a Quran in his possession. And I was wondering, is there any evidence in your research that you found that in common American law, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, there has been a leaking or influence of Islamic law within the greater American form of legislation and policy making from the get-go, or from at least 1776? Thanks. No, I don't. I, I, uh, I have a, a great interest in Islamic law and Islamic studies, and uh, look at Islamic law, uh, American law only to the extent that, that the one has an influence on the other. Uh, it, it's, it's not gone so far as to, to look for, uh, uh, for origins of ideas, uh, crossovers, uh, and so on. But uh, these things happen, uh, and, and it's, it's not unusual to find Hindu law having aspects of Islamic law, or Muslim family law having aspects of British law, and so on. Uh, there are clear examples in, within Islamic law of, of uh, either the Sasanian or the Eastern Roman legal system having an influence upon it, and it's still called Sharia. Uh, for instance, you have the, the judiciary in Islam, and the judge in, in, in Arabic is called the Qadi, and that certainly is an institution that can be traced to the text. But then you have a hierarchy of Qadis, a, jur a juridical system, and you have Qadi al Qudat the Supreme Judge, or what we would call the Supreme Court. And that, and that system was adopted from, from secular societies. So societies have always and will always continue to borrow and lend to each other. And that is, in my opinion, uh, the bedrock of civilization. No civilization can claim to have created its monuments and its edifices by, by and of its own. It's, it's always this process, to use that term again, process of leakage. We all leak into each other. And thank God for that. For without it, we would not have all our great accomplishments.